So this is an introduction to the atomic structure and you already have the definitions for what an atom is, what an element is, and what I'm representing right here is the symbol for the element carbon as it is in the periodic table. So I'm going to show you with the periodic table right there. So carbon is element number six and it's right there in the periodic table. And that number and that number, they they represent a specific thing. The number that you have on top of the symbol for your carbon, that's the atomic number. And then the other number that you have for each element in the periodic table represents the atomic mass. Now, this, this symbol represents carbon and it represents the element carbon and when you're talking about the element carbon, you should be thinking about that element being composed entirely of carbon atoms. So we're going to be um, talking about the structure of the atom, starting with the subatomic particles and then we are going to move on into more specific things like isotopes and ions and how the subatomic particles are different for those. And then we're going to move into the electron configuration, which means that we're going to place electrons in a specific location in, in, the, in the atom. So for every every type, every type of atom, we're always going to have three different types of subatomic particles. It's not just three subatomic particles, but three different types. And your three subatomic particles are protons, neutrons, and electrons. And then we have a symbol for each one, which is what I'm going to keep using. P plus for protons and zero for neutrons, and then we have E minus for electrons. Now the symbol is just the first letter of the name for your subatomic particle, followed by the charge that they have. Each proton represents a charge of plus one. Neutrons, they are neutral, which means that they are not charged at all, so we charge equal to zero. And then electrons, we represent each electron as having a negative one charge. Now, mass defined into atomic mass unit. This is not the actual mass in a unit that you know, like grams or kilograms. This is the defined mass to simplify the calculations that we're going to be doing. Protons, we define the protons as having a mass equal to one atomic mass unit or AMU. For neutrons, we have exactly the same um, AMU or atomic mass unit, a mass of one. And then electrons is not that they have a mass equal to zero. What that zero means is that the electrons, they have a mass that is much, much smaller than the mass that we have for the protons and the neutrons. So if you actually calculate <coughs> the mass of an atom using the masses for your protons and neutrons and electrons, when you add all of those masses together, adding or not adding the mass of the electrons is not going to change the final number. So that's why it's defined as a zero. The actual masses for the protons, neutrons, and the electrons in unit of kilograms, this one here will have a mass of about 1.7 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. The neutrons, they have about the same mass, about 1.7 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. And then for the electrons, we have a number that is times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. Minus 31 is a much much smaller number than minus 27 kilograms. That's why we define that one as having a mass equal to zero AMU. Now, there's a lot of information that we can get from the periodic table and a lot of information that we can derive from the information that we have in the periodic table. 
the atomic mass, you already have that number given in the periodic table. And I'm representing my number here with no decimal places. And whenever you're doing a type of calculation like the ones that I'm going to show you, you should do the same thing. You should represent your masses as a whole number, rounding just to a whole number. So the atomic mass, you have that number right there, but that number represents the addition of your protons and your neutrons. Each proton has a mass of one AMU. Each neutron has a mass of one AMU, which means that if you add your number of protons and your number of neutrons, you're going to have an atomic mass with unit of AMU. So the atomic mass is given by how many protons you have, how many neutrons you have. If you add them together, that will give you the atomic mass. But that number you already have. So that number is more useful to find out the number of neutrons because the atomic number right here, which is that number on top of the symbol of your element, the atomic number is telling you the number of protons for that element. So you have here atomic mass, which is the number of protons plus number of neutrons, the atomic number, which is the number of protons. So you can actually find the number of neutrons for a specific atom of an element because your atomic mass is the addition of those two, which means that your atomic mass minus the number of protons, which is the same as your atomic number, that's going to give you the number of neutrons. So the atomic number represents the number of protons, right? Which means that that's going to give you, and you will see why, the identity of the atom. If you have a periodic table, you can look at your periodic table, and I'm writing here just five, five different symbols for five different elements, and it's this six, seven, eight, and nine, and all the way to 10. So these five elements. So I'm copying just my numbers and the symbol from the periodic table. Atomic number. And you have here the atomic mass. So that represents your atomic number, which is telling you the number of protons. So when you change that number, you're actually changing the atom or the element that you're looking at. If your atomic number is six, you have six protons. Right? But when that number changes to seven, for example, now you're going to have seven protons and you don't have carbon anymore. Now you have nitrogen. If your atomic number changes from 6 to 9, it means that your proton number is changing from 6 to 9. And now you have a new new type of atom, which is going to be fluorine right there. Okay? So that's why the number of protons is giving you the identity. And the number of protons is not going to change. It's not going to change. The number of protons is the one that you have in the periodic table for a specific atom. Out of your three subatomic particles, the number of electrons and the number of neutrons, they can be different, and you can still have the same type of atom, but with a different amount of electrons or with a different amount of neutrons. But that will never happen with the number of protons. Okay? 
So now we can actually calculate for any atom in the periodic table or any atom representing an element in the periodic table, we can calculate the number of protons, electrons, or neutrons with the information that we have and adding a new piece of information that we have right here. Atoms as they exist or as we have them represented in the periodic table um, they are neutral, which means that they have the same number of positive and negative charges. Your neutrons, they have no charge. Your protons are your positive charges. The electrons are the negative charges. So for you to have an overall charge equal to zero, the number of positive and negative charges, they have to be the same. Right? So if you have carbon, your atomic number, which is six, it's telling you how many protons you have. And that will be six protons right there for carbon. Now to find out the number of electrons, since your atom is neutral, you have six protons, which means that you're having six positive charges. So to cancel out your six positive charges, you need six negative charges, which are your number of electrons. Now to find out your number of neutrons, Neutrons are given by your atomic mass minus your atomic number, which is the number of protons. So for carbon, you have 12 minus six, that's going to give you six neutrons. So you can do the same thing for nitrogen. I'm going to calculate for nitrogen. Atomic number is telling you the number of protons. Your atom is neutral, which means that you have the same number of protons and electrons. And then to get your number of neutrons, that will be 14, which is your mass, minus your atomic number, which is seven, and that will give you a seven. And you can find out number of protons, electrons, and neutrons for oxygen, fluorine, and neon. So I'm going to do fluorine, and you can do the other two. For fluorine, number of protons should be 9, which is your atomic number. Number of electrons is going to be exactly the same number of protons that you have. And then for the number of neutrons, you're going to have the mass, which is 19, minus 9, which is your atomic number, and that will give you 10 neutrons. So for your first two examples, you have exactly the same number for your three um, different subatomic particles for carbon for nitrogen but that's not always true and that's what I'm giving you this example here you can have you you're always going to have the same number of protons and electrons when your atom is neutral when you don't have an overall charge the number of neutrons it it, it can be different for some elements especially with a low number for your atomic number you can find the same number for all three subatomic particles but as the number of protons keeps increasing in the periodic table, you will see that the number of neutrons is start changing. So you're going to do this on your own. You're going to use the periodic table to find out the symbol for these elements listed here. You're going to find the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons for these four. So now I'm going to move to um, isotopes. So I told you that the number of protons, it's not going to be different if you're looking at the same type of atom. So the number of protons cannot change. But out of your three subatomic particles, the number of neutrons can be different. You're looking at the same type of atom, but they're going to contain a different number of neutrons, and those are isotopes. So when we have isotopes, we represent the, the symbol for that element in a different configuration from what you have in the periodic table. So we can have an isotopic symbol represented like this, where you have the symbol for the element, but you have on top the atomic mass, and then the atomic number will be down here. If you're confused on um, which one is which, the atomic mass, um, there's just one exception. The atomic mass is always higher than the atomic number. 
And then we have another possible way of representing an isotope. It will be the symbol followed by the atomic mass. So the atomic number is not given in this configuration here because you can actually just look the symbol in the periodic table and find out the atomic number because even though you have isotopes, the atomic number, which is the number of protons, it's always the same. So I'm using the second, the second type of um, notation here to represent two isotopes for oxygen. Symbol, oxygen, followed by a number, and that number represents the atomic mass. And you know it's the atomic mass, not the atomic number, because if you search oxygen in your periodic table, oxygen is right there, and the atomic number is 8, not 16 or 18. So for my oxygen with a mass of 16, oxygen with a mass of 18, those two are isotopes because you have exactly the same element or type of atom, but the masses are different. The masses of your isotopes, they are different because you have a different number of neutrons. The number of protons is still eight for each one, which is your atomic number for oxygen from the periodic table, which means that if the mass is given by protons plus neutrons and the number of protons is not changing, but the number of the mass is, the only thing that is going to be different to give you a different mass is going to be the number of neutrons. So the number of protons is your atomic number from the periodic table. The number of electrons, if your atom is neutral, you have the same number of positive and negative charges. So protons are your positive, electrons are your negatives, and you have the same number for those two. And then, finally here, you can calculate the number of neutrons, which is going to be your mass for the isotope minus the number of protons, which is your atomic number. And for the first one, you're going to have eight. But for the second one, when you have the isotope of oxygen with a mass of 18, when you calculate the number of neutrons, that will be 18 minus eight, which is going to give you 10. So that 10 is your number of neutrons. And as you can see, you have your two isotopes they have the same number of protons, the same number of electrons, but now your number of neutrons is different. So I'm giving you here three isotopes for carbon and I'm using this notation. You have the symbol, atomic mass on top, atomic number on the bottom, and you should know that that's your atomic number because that's the same number for all of them. And because if you check your periodic table for carbon, atomic number is six. So what you have here is the mass for each isotope and you're going to use the mass and the atomic number for each isotope to find the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons. And then you're going to find um, three different isotopes for hydrogen. You can do a Google search or you can use um, the book to find out three different isotopes for hydrogen, the mass for each isotope, and what is special about the isotopes for hydrogen is that these three isotopes, they actually have a name. We don't have a name for any other isotope, but just for hydrogen.